The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, we got news about uh, the new Hasbro comics coming out from Image. So to kind of catch everybody up, uh, Robert Kirkman Skybound has the uh, Hasbro license. Uh, we'll be putting out a new G.I. Joe and Transformers. It's part of what uh, Kirkman is is more or less calling the Energon universe, uh, which is uh, coming out as a as a kind of a surprise book. It uh, arrives July 19th. And this book is uh, is going to basically kind of introduce this shared G.I. Joe Transformers universe and try and do some stuff with it. And, you know, we talked with Joe about that and we, you know, we kind of talked about more or less how this looks and how it will roll out. My my assessment, as we talked about on that video, and it kind of continues to be the same, is that this is a play for comic collectors. The way they're introducing it, the way they're kind of putting everything out, the way that they're uh, releasing this. It has a comic collector feel to it, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, it, but you know, you kind of look at this and and hope that uh, you you kind of hope that it would not appeal to kids, but it, but try and bring in that market. This is one of the things that that Marvel did so well was that they used these you know Transformers and and GI Joe comics to really you know bring people into comics as a whole. The idea of a shared universe. Um, you know, with, with surprise releases uh, from Robert Kirkman. Again, he's a great, you know, it's it's a bad idea to bet against Kirkman, and I'm not betting against him per se, but I just, uh, it always makes me feel I wish there was a little bit more uh, that was that was appealing to a bigger audience. But maybe there's some other things going on. I If you ask me, who are the people who are going to crack distribution and get comics into hands outside of our direct market and do something truly different, kind of break open a new business model? In my mind, it's either Kirkman or Miller, uh, you know, Mark Miller uh, or Millar, if you're being fancy. But it's 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 got to be one of those two at this point. So it, at this point, it's a race. The gauntlet is thrown, Mark. Come on. You can't let Robert beat you. His name's Robert. Your name is Mark. It's a tougher name. You got to beat him. Anyway, um, <laughs> and by the way, I as an aside, I was talking with a friend and uh, was mentioning that, you know, how you write the Punisher. I don't think it's hard to write the Punisher at all, to be honest. I think, uh, you know, people are struggling with that at Marvel. I think it's relatively easy. Uh, but the but the key I would go to, and you guys are going to immediately, you probably disagree on the surface. But if you think about it, it will start to make sense. If you really go back and look at those Punisher comics, you don't need him walking around all miserable all the time. You just need him, you know, a lot of those early comics, he was like kind of cracking jokes and, and being kind of funny. I mean, he was, he was like James Bond, but killed people like at a higher frequency than James Bond. And again, you're going to think that analogy absolutely sucks, but I promise you, go back and look at some of those comics. That's how you write him. You basically write him like kind of rogue James Bond doing his own thing and, and killing people. And that, that, that's how you write it. You don't, you don't overcomplicate it by, well, we have to deal with his tortured past and the fact that he's killing people, but he's that hero, but he's not a hero. And now he's a demon agent. And fuck, now he's in weird world. Like, like, what are you doing? You just have him be James Bond. That kills people. By the way, if you think the whole Punisher thing is absurd with the, the skull and all oh, the white nationalists took it and all that kind of stuff, consider this. If the white nationalists start calling themselves 007 as a symbol, you would see a world where they would be trying to retire that 007 name because some weirdo morons uh, somewhere are cosplaying uh, using a symbol. Like, like, what, what, are you saying you'd get rid of James Bond? Like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. None of this makes any sense. A lot of this culture war shit doesn't make any sense for that matter. But anyway, all right, back to the news. So anyway, we have the creative teams for this new, uh, you know, shared inner John universe. So we've got Void Rivals, number one, which I mentioned, kicks off this entire shared Transformers G.I. Joe universe uh, coming out very shortly. Um, you could actually get it, I think, probably. Well, let's see. I'm, I'm recording this on the way home from the airport. So my guess is it's out soon. Or it's out, it's already out by the time this video goes out. It's a uh, it is a Tuesday, and I'm driving back from the airport. So there you go. But now we know the creative teams for the comics, and and in many ways it's kind of cool. So we've got Transformers number one, which will come out in September, and this comic will be written and drawn by Daniel Warren Johnson, who is a a uh, big ass Transformers fan. 
loves the genre, loves the series, loves uh, loves everything about Transformers. Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson, who, um, you know, on one hand, if I was picking who would do Transformers in terms of an art style, I would probably lean to doing somebody who has almost a manga style, really kind of slick chrome and kind of handling those vehicles right. But I have to admit, Daniel Warren Johnson, or for that matter, a uh, friend of the channel, Sean Gordon Murphy, who draws like absolutely fucking incredible cars, like either one of those two drawing this will probably be pretty badass. So Transformers number one in September, Daniel Warren Johnson will be doing that. Then we've got Duke number one out in December. And Duke, of course, G.I. Joe Duke, you know, uh, who is uh, into autoerotic asphyxiation is whatever. I'm sorry. I'm just putting that in for the uh, SEO. Oh, yeah. BTS. Pokemon. All right. There you are. Five of you got that joke. Anyway, Duke number one will be uh, written by uh, Joshua Williamson, who's been uh, kind of leading a lot of the DC events. And uh, he'll be coming off of Night Terrors right into Duke. And it'll be drawn, drawn by Tom Riley, who has done uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, he did The Thing. And, um, you know, it, solid again, solid artist, solid choice. And then Cobra Commander number one, will be out in January of 2024, so first month of the new year, and that will also be written by Joshua Williamson and drawn by Andrea Molina, or Milana. Um, and so, pr pretty cool stuff. Uh, they look they look nice. Uh, Void Rivals, uh, which is out shortly, is described as uh, the blockbuster Oblivion song team of Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici debut the biggest all-new comic series of 2023 with the uh, with sorry with the launch of an all-new shared universe Transformers and G.I. Joe war rages around the sacred ring where the last remnants of two worlds have collapsed around a black hole in a never-ending war however when pilot Derek and his rival uh, Solia both crash on a desolate planet these two enemies must find a way to escape together what dark force will await them that will threaten the entire universe? So they're, you know, that that's what's going on. It's, it's this, um, it's a story that sets a backdrop for this giant uh, uh, Transformers uh, world and and big stuff. So Void Rivals is a series written by Kirkman, um, and this is a kind of brand new surprise series as Kirkman likes to do. But this creates the Energon universe, GI Joe, and uh, Transformers, and now you know that the uh, Team members on it, Daniel Warren Johnson, Josh Williamson, uh, respectively, for Transformers and G.I. Joe. So, question is, now that you know the creative teams, are you into it? Is this a series you want? Is this, uh, or is this how, how do you feel about it? Uh, Josh Williamson, I, I like Josh Williamson. I, I, I liked a lot of what he did at DC. I felt like the more they pushed Josh Williamson into doing the big uh, Dark Crisis events and everything else, I felt like we lost a little bit of what made Josh Williamson uh, great. But still a good writer. Nothing, nothing against that. So hopefully he'll, he'll bring some really good stuff with these comics. Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson on Transformers feels fairly inspired to me. That's a pretty, pretty interesting choice. Um, I again, it, it's not necessarily intuitive, but I think given his love for the series and kind of what he brings, and I, I was such a big fan of uh, some of what he did, especially like uh, Murder Falcon and some of these other stuff. I think I think he is. Um, I'm I'm interested to see it. So let let's go. Uh, the Bill the Beta Ray Bill series is pretty awesome from Marvel last year. Let's see what uh, we get from Danny Warren Johnson Transformers. But are you buying it? Is this exciting? Is it the right angle for you? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening. <laughs>